Our friend, our sister, our mother, our daughter, Lord, the one that walked with us, God. She was our friend. She was one of our own. Father, we thank you for the life that was Pat Becker's. Father, we thank you for the witness. We thank you for the light that shone. We thank you for the time that we got to spend with her and that we got to know her. And Father, we pray that everything we do today would honor you, Lord, and would help us to remember who she was and is. And one day when we're reunited again, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder, consider
I'd like to welcome everyone to the service for Pat Becker. I didn't know her middle name was Jean until today, well, when I saw the thing. We're going to have June Hess come and read her obituary, and then we're going to have some of the family members come and read some scripture. So June, if you would come. Patricia Jean Becker of Belvedere, formerly of Crystal Lake, passed away Sunday, March 29th in Belvedere at the age of 82. Patricia was born April 9th, 1937 in Chicago, the daughter of Hilmar and Erna Marie Josephine Hansen. She was the loving mother of Linda, the late Sony Stromek, Karen LaBelle, and Nancy K. Becker, beloved grandmother of David Haley Ahern and Sean Ahern, Matthew Stacy Cal Calabrese, Lindsay Calabrese, Dominic Calabrese, Diana Calabrese, and Gina Calabrese, and the loving great grandmother to Kaya, Jack, Cole, Isla, Luna, Clementine, Autumn, Peyton, Landon, Chase, Brian, Griffin, and Isabella. Patricia is also survived by her loving sister Judy Andrews and nephew Brian, Lisa Andrews. In addition to her parents, she was preceded in death by her young nephew, Robert Mark Andrews, and a brother-in-law named Robert Andrew Andrews. Along with being an amazing parent and a grandmother, Pat was the most loving and caring dog mom. Every dog she took in was blessed with a great life. They brought her so much joy. Patricia and Nancy were members of Belvedere First Assembly of God, where they had a wonderful church family. A special thank you to Heartland Hospice for the kind and compassionate care they gave her as she traveled through this season of her life. To our beloved mother and grandmother, you are greatly missed and we love you. And Nancy, where did Nancy, there you are. John 3:16 For God so loved the world he gave his, he for God so loved the world that he gave his begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life Psalms 91 He who dwells in the shadow of the high most high resides in the shadow of the mighty, I will say to the Lord, my refuge, the fortress of my God, in the Zooms who I trust. Psalms 91. Good job. Good job. And now Lindsay.
John 14, 1 through 6. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, and believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am you may be also. And you know the way to where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Romans 8, 38 through 39. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Was, uh, was really special to mom, to grandma, and she had it underlined in her Bible and uh, brought it up to me several times um, because it gave her great hope, she said, and she imagined what it would be like to see her mom and dad again. So it's First Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope, for since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by a word from the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will not precede these, who, those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. And now Mona, who's kind of our church grandma, is going to come and read the family stories that were sent in. Thanks a lot. She was a loving mother of three, grandmother of seven, and great-grandmother of 13. All her grandchildren gave her such joy, whether she could be with them personally or FaceTime and or the pictures and videos that we would share with her. Mom read her Bible every morning and marked many verses that were special to her. She would pray every day for her family and often asked about each one so she would know how to pray. Diana says she would never forget those quiet moments with Grandma where she would squeeze my hand and smile at me when she was proud of me. Her smile felt like sunshine. I could feel how much she loved me. Mom often served at her church. In fact, she saw the need for a special education Sunday school at Willow Creek Church and was instrumental in starting one. She enjoyed her Bible study at Belvedere Assembly of God with her friends and liked when she went for Taco Tuesdays at Gicello's with her friends afterward. We love that. We, Nancy and Linda, would take her to Gicello's Fridays and some Sundays, which she enjoyed so much. Michelle at Gicello's was always kind. It would make her laugh, and it was fun. For many years, when Nancy was a Special Olympics ice skater, Mom would get up at 4 or 5 a.m. to get her to the ice on time and practice before she went to work in the morning. It was a special time for Nancy, which included hot chocolate. It was a very special memory for Nancy. They traveled for ice skating competitions to L.A. and as far away as Alaska. She says, now, I knew Mom really loved me. Mom and Nancy took a first cruise in 1998 and she was so excited about how wonderful it was that for Christmas, two years later, she took her three daughters and four oldest grandchildren on a seven-day Caribbean cruise. She wanted to share this experience with her family. She loved to make others happy. She was in bookkeeping, accounting, most of her career, the last 20 years for UNESCO, the creator of Precious Moments, which is why we all have dozens of these figurines 
For a time, she was a school bus driver when Nancy was young, so Nancy could be with her, which was so much fun for her. Most of her students wanted to sit by her. Mom talked about her parents often. She loved them so much. She would tell stories of them and told me that she often turned to 1 Thessalonians 4 in the Bible and dreamed of how wonderful it would be to be re reunited with them. Things from my childhood. Mom playing the piano and singing Silver Bells and White Christmas. I thought she had the most beautiful singing voice. She drew so well. I loved looking at the faces of people she would draw. I think her talent was passed on to her grandchildren. Many are very artistic, and Lindsay is even an artist by profession. Pat was a loving parent and grandparent. She traveled many times with Nancy to participate in ice skating events and for the Special Olympics. She was so proud of Nancy's accomplishments. She also enjoyed going to grandkids' ball games and events. She would travel hours to see the grandkids' baseball games in Indianapolis. Pat loved to travel. She was an avid ocean cruiser with Nancy. They traveled the Caribbean several times and went on a wonderful cruise to Alaska. She loved to tell us about their travels and show pictures. As a Christmas present one year, she brought us all on a cruise through the Caribbean with them. We had a wonderful time together. Pat came to visit us when we were stationed in Germany. She brought Matt and Lindsay with to share in this adventure. We had a wonderful time traveling through Germany, Italy, Switzerland, and the rental van. On another trip, she wanted to meet all our relatives in Denmark, so we took a drive up to Denmark. She was so amazed to know the hotel we were staying at was right across the street from her grandfather's store. We were able to go in the store. I loved watching her as we learned so much about her and grandparents' life and parents' life before coming to the States. Something we never knew about Pat until later in life, she loved comedy movies. One, on one of her visits to our house in Florida, a silly comedy came on the TV. I never heard her laugh so hard. It was precious to see this. At other times, we would have a wine or two and giggle about things for hours. Pat was an animal champion. She would help any animal at any time, from birds to squirrels. Mostly, she was the most loving and caring dog Pat. Every dog she made a home for was blessed with a wonderful attentive life. They brought so much joy to her. She told us of a story when she was a child, and her beloved dog bit her ear. She was so worried that her dog would bit, get in trouble that she hid the bite from everyone. This was the song that towards the end we played for her so that Linda could let her hear it when she was in hospice. And now every time I play it, it's, it's her song now, right? Blessed assurance Blessed assurance Jesus is mine Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story, this is my This is 
my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long, this is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long, perfect submission. So, this is not my first funeral. In fact, every time I do one, I count how many I've done to see how many I've done people I've said goodbye to. It's different when it's one of ours. Because of the 20 or so I've done in the six years I've been here, only, only four or five of them were, were what I would call mine our people, the ones that we sat with and potlucked with and, and hung out with and, and saw every Sunday and spent time with, and that's different. I can't say what I'm about to say with theological certainty. I've said it before at times like this, but I do feel like somehow, some way or another, that whatever happens after this, that they get to see what goes on, that, that God lets them see this part. I can't prove it. I can't take you to a Bible verse and, and show you contextually. It's just a feeling I have in my heart. And I remember that because the first time that I had, that I had to do this for somebody that was one of mine was Gloria Bordes. And, and when Gloria Bordes went, went I, I, I promise you, I felt like walking around the parsonage for a week. She was just following me around, right? Like I would be in the church and I'd feel like Gloria was near me and I'd be doing this. And, and it was kind of the same way with Pat. And so my thought was, if Pat is in heaven looking down and Gloria is beside her and Pat would say something like, that's such a wonderful service. And Gloria would say, what? I can't hear you. Speak up. Because that was how Gloria and Pat talked about every Tuesday at Bible study Pat would say something, and Gloria, not, not wanting to put in her hearing aid, would just <laughs> let everybody know when she couldn't hear, and obviously Pat spoke very softly. It's more special when somebody who has passed has died in Christ. It's different when a saint goes. You know, because we think of saints of being the kind of people you make the statues of and put out in your lawns and, and things like that that we've seen. But the Bible is not ashamed to call those of us that follow Christ saints. And, and I get it. It makes no sense. I know me. I wouldn't consider myself that. I wouldn't talk about me in those terms. But the Bible does. And, and more so when you see somebody like Pat, and if you could turn me down either in the monitor or something, I'm getting a little ring. When you see somebody like Pat, who wasn't shiny and loud and obnoxious like someone like me is, I get a lot of attention. If I'm not getting attention, there's some almost unwilling response in me that says, let's do something loud. I don't mean to. It's just kind of my personality. It's hard to ignore me, right? <laughs> but it was easy to walk by Pat if you didn't know her. It was easy not to notice her. And there is something so much more special about when she gave you her words, then somebody like me who's full of words. I have words and words and words, and I love words and, and, and all sorts. And, and when someone only gives them sparingly, 
and they give them in such a loving manner. And they're, neg- they're never negative, and they're never taking anyone else down. And it was never she gave me some word to let me know how mad she was. It was, it was always something positive and loving. And even as I was getting dressed today, I told somebody, I'm putting on my tie, and, my, and I'm getting all, you know, and, and I could just almost hear her saying, no, don't do that for me. Don't fuss. It's okay. It'll be just, you know, just show up like you would. It's fine. You know, and I'm like, no, no, Pat, I'm going to put on a tie for you today. I feel like it's important. This is your day. I, I hate looking down at my notes. I just want to. I just want to talk, right? I, I, I couldn't process it, right? Like normally, when somebody leaves, you can you, you you have a moment to process it. I remember us talking on the phone the night, right? And and I couldn't go. I couldn't. I couldn't be there with her. I, I, I can't tell you as a pastor when it's one of yours and, and you can't go stand beside him in that moment. I've held someone's hand as they left, and there's a beauty to that. And, and it was just painful that I couldn't be there in that moment. It, it was like with Fred, right? Where I couldn't get down there. I couldn't do anything. And you feel so helpless. I remember as the disease was taking its toll on her, there was a moment in which I took Mona and we went down to see her and we took the guitar and, and she didn't know us. She had no idea who we were. And that's why I brought the guitar because I'm like, if you don't like me, maybe you'll like the guitar, right? Maybe you'll like one of us. And so we started playing, and it was the song, Jesus Loves Me. She remembered it. She sang it. No matter where she was in her heart, no matter what was going on with her mind, when she heard the song, she still sang the words. There's this thing that happens when you have a disease like that, or even a lot of us, when we get older, it's going to happen. I, I tell these young kids I play pickleball with all the time, 50 will happen to you. You will turn around and you are 50 and things hurt and life just does that. You can't control it. And they, there's some of them call me youngsters still, right? And I'm hitting 50 next year. I'm not even there yet, but I'm, I'm getting ready for it. I'm preparing. But there's something that happens when you get older. That whatever little barriers you keep in front of yourself to make people look at you a certain way begin to fall off. Part of it is I think the older you get, the less you care about what people think about you. And you're just, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and say what I'm going to say because that's where I'm at. But if you knew Pat, even when the veil was stripped away, even when she didn't have the wherewithal to guard her tongue or to guard her heart against anybody, there was such a niceness and such a beauty inside of her that not an angry word came out. I have seen people go through the same thing and I've seen them turn mean and I've seen them turn angry because they had had one side in front of people and another side behind people. And when you get to that stage, there's a point at which you can no longer hide that. But I can tell you that when she got there, there was a sweetness through and through. There was just a softness that was still there all the way to the very end. It's different when a saint goes. It's different when one of ours goes. It's not the same as somebody who doesn't know the Lord. I've been at both, and it is not the same. And so John 14, 6, we read it earlier. It says, don't let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If not, I would have told you so. I am going away to, pre- I'm going away to, away to prepare a place for you. Some people demand a seat at the table, and there are other people that you have to make a place for. There are people in our lives that if we don't make room to have them in our lives, we will be robbed of who they are. Because people that speak softly and don't put it out there and don't make you pay attention to them and don't do those sorts of things, you've got to make a place for them to speak. We do small groups in church, and I always say, I always tell my small group leaders, don't let your talkers talk the whole time, because there's some of us talkers, and they'll talk the whole time. You always stop it, and you go to the one that's quiet, and you say, what do you think about this? And you have to ask them, because they're not just going to put it out there, right? And Pat wasn't the kind of person that was going to force her opinion on, but if you would take a moment and stop and ask her, what would come out of her was beautiful. She defined herself by her love for others. I put this, she was one of my originals when I came here and because I'm Pastor David and the other guy was Pastor Dale and some people said Pastor Dave and Pastor Dale that more than one time she called me Pastor Dale. You know, and you just went with it. Sure, I'll be just, you know, whatever. (laughs) What I know about her is this, that her life wasn't easy. I, I debated on whether or not to say this because I understand the hardness with what, I, I understand this. The two of the greatest sacrifices she ever made, she made for you, Nancy. 
she, she became a bus driver just so she could have you by her, right? Just so she could be by you. And I know, I know, and I just saw, I just saw Sally go through with TJ that letting you go to Milestone, right? That, that for a mom, that's so hard to send you off, but to know that that's where you were going to be the happiest at, and that's where you were going to find your purpose and your fulfill and your calling at, and how hard that was for her as a person who defined herself by how she could love others and by what she could do for others. She wasn't defined by how much attention you gave her. She was defined by what she could do for you. And that is not something that we see in most people nowadays. Simple faith is not a value that we espouse in modern society. We're at the point in our society where we're more impressed with someone's doubt than we are with their faith. We're more impressed with somebody who will walk away than someone who will stay faithful. We always talk about the one going off on the adventure and they're bravely setting out. But what about the person that day after day does the right thing and no one says thank you and no one puts their hand on their shoulder and no one ever acknowledges them and yet day after day they do the right thing. And when they pass, at least then we should honor and say, how great was the faithfulness of this person that when they stand before God, they get to hear the verse, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in a few things and I will make you ruler over much. See, this is what I know as a loud, obnoxious pastor who gets a lot of attention, that one day when I get to heaven, I very well may be her janitor. I very well may get to the mansions. And you know, you know what, David? You got a lot of attention down there. Now it's Pat's turn. You go scrub her toilet. And I'll be like, all right, Lord, where's the toilet? I'm going to scrub it. Right? Because he says that the greatest will be the least and the least will be the greatest. And we understand that there's some of us who get our reward here. And I can tell you this with absolute certainty. If there is no heaven, if there is no judgment, there is no justice on this earth. Because the wicked prosper and the righteous falter and we see bad things happen to good people all the time and sometimes you can't make sense of anything unless that you understand that one day we will stand face to face with God who knows every idle word spoken, every secret thing done, all of the desires of our heart, all of the times, and then we always think on the bad, right? Like, oh my gosh, he's seen every bad thing I did. But you know he also saw every good thing you did that you never got rewarded for, that you never told anybody out, you know, like... like God, God bless it, mom or dad, every time you had to wipe that child's behind and you were just done with them and that baby wouldn't stop crying and you're just done with it. And every time your husband or your wife made you mad and you wanted to walk out of that relationship and it's really easy to do. And yet you said, you know what, we're going to put our head down. We're going to make this work no matter what. You know what? <laughs> Till death do us part. And if that means one of us has to murder the other, then so be it. That's where we're going to get to. Amen. I often joke, the last thing I'll see is my wife with the pillow, and I'll be like, I deserve this. I get it. I just, you know, come on. Right. We, we kid about that. Everybody knows relationships are hard. Marriage is hard. Waking up every day and caring for somebody is hard. And Pat was the kind of person that would get up and do it day after day after day. And nobody had to say thank you. Nobody had to pat her on the back. Nobody had to promise her a reward if she would do it. She just did it because that's who she was. She was faithful. And so I know that... 2 Timothy 4, 7, 8 applies when it says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. There is reserved for me the crown of righteousness with the Lord. The righteous judge will give me on that day and not to me only, but all those who loved his appearing. By whatever measure you want to measure, Pat, she won. I, I get it. She didn't get to go in the, in the space rocket with Jeff Bezos, right? She didn't get to make it. In, into billionaire's role, she wasn't, you know, rolling her Austin Martin off the back of her yacht. But she won. I mean, she won life. She made it to the finish line, who she was, even in the face. And, and listen, Alzheimer's is terrible. Dementia is terrible to watch somebody you love go through that. But to see even then that she still remained her to the very end. That who she was on the inside couldn't be taken away, even to the very end. I love what Job says, that I know my Redeemer lives, and one day I'm going to stand, and I'm going to see Him face to face, and my eyes will not see a stranger. I'm going to know my God. And when she closed her eyes here and she opened her eyes there, it wasn't a stranger she was face to face with. It was her Jesus. She will sing in the choir of angels with a voice that no longer wavers. Music, singing is all self-confidence, right? And I believe she has the confidence now to sing. 
There's even something symbolic in the fact that she was cremated because there was something about that that said her last great act was to be on the altar like a sacrifice, like a, a savory smell, like even, even in death, there was something so precious to the Lord that she gave her life so well to all of us. And Patricia, you will be missed. You only call them by their full name, Patricia Jean Becker, twice, right? When you're married and now. So Patricia Jean Becker, we will miss you. We will all one day take our place here on the table in a coffin, one way or the other. We all will sit around and people will have conversations about us at dinner time and they will talk about what our life meant and who we were and all of the stories about us. And someone will write out stories about you and, and they'll go through your Bible and look at the verses you underlined and they'll figure out what your life was. I, it's this great reckoning that we all go through. And it's times like these when we have these moments that we think to ourselves, when it's my time, what will they say of me? What will I leave behind? Who will still love me after I'm gone? So Lord, we commend Pat to you. She is in your hands now and out of ours. And we thank you for all the time we had with her. What we're going to do is we're going to play a song. And what I want you to do, because of the situation. Many of us were not able to see her at the end. So what we have is we have her remains here. And what I want you to do, we're just going to one by one as the song plays, I want you to come up and just put your hand on the table and whatever last thought or prayer or commending her to God, like if you were going to sign a letter to God saying, this is what Pat was to me, or if you just want to say those last things so you get that moment of closure, I want to give you that time. After that, we have uh, just some refreshments over here in the side. If you don't want refreshments, you can go out the back door there. But Sammy, if you would go ahead and play that. Let's all stand. And let the family come first and just put your hand on the table and just say a last prayer for Pat, okay? All right. Go ahead, Nancy. Nancy. 